Hello, it's Susan Brock, and today I wanted to take a break from my packing. You can see all the boxes around me. I'm moving the day after tomorrow, but I'm taking a break, and I wanted to show you how to make these sweet little woven heart baskets. Um, they're very cool. Uh, a friend of mine is making these little baskets these little baskets for May Day. She's a EC teacher whose school is closed as are many of ours. Um, and she's gonna put a tea bag in and an invitation to a virtual tea party. So um, I just thought I would, I would um, share with you how to make these. So I'm gonna turn my camera down so you can see better, maybe, hopefully. Um, I, made, I made this pattern, which um, I'm gonna put on my blog as a PDF. I'll put a link to it uh, down below. Um, so pretty much everything in my house is packed right now. And so I couldn't really decide what to make them out of. And so I decided I, I can just use this pattern and um, just cut it out. And that's what I did with this. I colored the back, I'll show you in a second. I colored the back and then I cut out the pattern and made it. So if you want, and you can also use this as a tracing pattern. So if you want to do that, you know, just cut it out. This is, um, this is my first attempt, which the things weren't long enough, but you can see what I did. So I cut it out and then I folded it over. And um, so you want to put, you want to put this end on a fold. I'm not going to do that right now, but pretend this is the fold. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a pencil. I'm going to take a pencil and trace it like that. Oopsie doopsie. And then I'm going to, I, this is already folded, but I'm going to, I'm going to fold it down so I can make my line across there so I can see where to end the cuts. And then I cut these so I could just uh, make the lines. Oops, it's not exactly straight, but I, I know where that will help me to know where to cut. Um, I also haven't been able <laughs> this is a little dull. I don't know where my pencil sharpeners are either. They're all packed. Um, but I'm making my little lines and then, you know, of course, uh, you can just, you know, you would just cut up to this, to this line right here. But um, I'm going to erase that. And what I did to make mine is, I should have done that on the other side, but oh well. Um, so for, this, for these smaller ones, there's two of them, and you can just use those two um, to make it if you want to make the bigger one. This is the smaller one that I made. Um, so you can kind of see how big that is or how big it is on the piece of paper. Um, if you want to make the bigger one, you need to print out two of these. But I'm going to start by flipping this over. And you can kind of, I don't know if you probably can't see, but I can see through where, where my, um, my, my patterns are. And I'm just going to, this is going to be a little... Um, <laughs> I have some pencil marks on it too, but it's still going to come out very nice, I hope. So I'm just coloring it. I'm just using two springtime colors. I just have some crayons. You could use markers or colored pencils. Certainly you could have your, um, your child or your children color these in however you want. They don't have to be two different colors. I like the way it looks when it's woven together in two colors and also just for the purposes of demonstrating it's easier to see when it's two colors so i am gonna finish coloring it on this side um there so i have two nice spring colors a spring kind of fuchsia color and a spring green i'm gonna turn it back over fold it in half see where it says right here fold, um, fold it right there, and 
There we go. Then I'm just gonna cut these out. So you need something to color with. You need the paper or some other paper if you prefer to use it. If you're gonna use a different paper, I would use kind of a medium weight paper, like, like this is just regular old printing paper, or you could use construction paper. I tried doing it with some watercolor paper that I still had out, but it was too stiff to really work with. Um, and like I also have some tissue paper, but that's too, too flimsy. So, so something like this is this weight or, or just a bit heavier is good to work with. So I am cutting out the second half. Like so. And then, so now you can see I have these little lines here. So I'm gonna, so these are cutting lines. I'm gonna cut right along those lines, right up to there. One, two, and when I was looking around online, I did see some patterns. If you wanna do something fancier, there are some that have these little um, pieces. Some are narrower and some are wider so it makes a different kind of pattern but i'm going for simple right now so this is what i'm doing so we're going to do that cut the um cut cut these lines on both pieces and then i'm done with those i'm going to turn these inside Turn these right side out. So there's my green one. And here's my fuchsia one. Oops. I see I didn't color that one all the way, but I'm just gonna leave it for now. Um, so so this is so it's gonna be a heart like this. So you want to start with it like this, either color on either side, whichever you like. Um, and we're gonna weave these, we're gonna weave these together. So this goes inside the first little tab, and then I'm gonna open it up like that and put it through, and then, so it's just going through the middle and then around through the middle and then around alternating. Um, oops. And I, I, when I have, I haven't, um, oops, that doesn't need to be there. I haven't had my little ones in my early childhood classes do these because they're a little bit fiddly. I've had them color the paper sometimes or else I've just made them for them. I've often used these on Valentine's Day and put like a little chocolate or something inside. Um, but you could try if you, if you think your child could do it, you could try and uh, tape is always good if something gets torn. All right, so my first one is woven in, out, in, out. So the next one is going out or around. So it's going around both sides, going around and then through the next one. And uh, like I said, these are these can be a little, they're not hard, but it's just like a little fiddly to get everything in the right place sometimes. So this is going, oopsies. This is going around. And this last one is going right there in the middle. Okay, and then as you go along, you can kind of slide these up a little like that. See, it's starting to look like a heart. So let me get my next one out here. So this one is going in between and then around and in between And then around, I suppose you could also um, try, I've, I haven't made them out of fabric, but you, you could try making them out of like felt or something. 
see what happens. I don't see why, why not. They wouldn't have these nice hard edges, but that doesn't really matter. Okay, so here I am on my last one. Um, I'm gonna slide that up a little. Actually, I'm gonna slide it down a little. <laughs> Changed my mind to get this first one through. So it's going around and then through. So I'm kind of sticking my nail in there a little bit to open up that space. Um, there it goes. Through. And these things, I still, I mean, I've made, I've made them sometimes through the years. And I still just think it's really cool how these things come together into a little basket. So around, and then this last one is going through. And it doesn't really matter. You can start... I mean, I could have started the other way around through. It's just the around through instead of that the way I did it. It's just the, the most important thing is just to alternate. So there it is. And it's a nifty little, little basket. Um, uh, for this one, I cut, I just used the same piece of paper and um, cut a strip off. And <laughs> this was the only thing that I had still that I could still find around. So I used my little um, glue stick to glue on a handle. You could also use a piece of yarn and punch a hole, or you could use paper and use a stapler. Um, you can make the handle shorter or longer if you wanna ha hang it over um, a doorknob. Just needs to be long enough to go around a doorknob. Uh, for May Day, traditionally, you would put some flowers in. Um, you could put a few flowers in with a little, with um, some, a damp paper towel or tissues and I'll wrap a little plastic around it because obviously this is not going to fare too well if it gets wet. I saw some little, some little goslings for the first time on my walk this morning. Hello, you don't need to keep looking at my counter. Um, I saw some little goslings, so I put that in there. You could put in a tea bag and an invitation to a tea party like my friend Laura did. Um, you could put a little treasure in there, just about anything. But these bat little baskets, I just think they're so sweet. So um, I'm going to share, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to share this pattern with you <laughs> um, on my blog. So you can, um, if you want to print it out and just use that paper or use it as a pattern if you have some other paper. I'm also gonna share, I posted, a couple years ago, I posted um, an easy May crown pattern. I had hoped to do another one today, but I just don't have enough stuff left around to do it with. And I've written an easy um, maypole that you can do just using a lamp or a tree or whatever is around. So I'm gonna share those links with you guys in case you're interested. And also um, I recorded just the, um, with my just just the um, audio for a couple May Day songs. Um, so happy May Day, and um, I will see you again soon from my new home. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Take care.